Welcome to this ICF Slalom podcast episode, part of the series running until the Paris 2024 Games. We bring you the inside stories from around the globe from the people who make canoe slalom so special. Here's your host, John Gregory. Thanks for joining me for this special series of daily ICF Slalom podcast episodes from the Lee Valley World Championships. One short episode each day will recap on the day's events and what to expect the next day. For this fourth episode, I'm joined again by a plethora of guests, Evie Livfarth from the USA, Monica Doria of Villa Rubla from Andorra, Mallory Franklin from Great Britain, Sidoris Tassiadis from Germany, Benjamin Savsex from Slovenia, plus Daniel Momenti, Mark Domenjo and Amber Maslin. A thrilling day of semi-finals and finals in women's and men's canoe. In the C1 women, nine countries made the final and accordingly each secure a quota spot for Paris. I spoke first to Evi Liefarth and then Monica Doria Villarubla, who was the fastest in the semi final. Okay, Evi, congratulations. That's uh, very nice to go in second qualifier for the semi final and ahead of Jess and Elena. Yeah, it's, it's super exciting. Um, I was really happy with my run. You know, I set out and I was just, you know, trying not to think about like the pressures or anything and just paddle like how I paddle. And I had a lot of fun out there, but yeah. Okay, well, that should give you a lot of confidence going into a final. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that paddling in the final is like such a mental game. So I'm excited to just chill between runs, watch some paddling, you know, learn from what the other girls did out there and then just give them my all for the final. OK, well, good luck this afternoon. Thank you so much. You, you are leading at the moment. Uh, Andrea is the only boat remaining to come down. Yeah, yeah. If I managed to put a really good run under the pressure I had. I'm super happy to have made it here now today. Oh, congratulations. I mean, there was one tap, so I guess there's still time on the board. Yeah, yeah, of course, but it's a tricky course. All the girls have had mistakes, so it's going to be a tough final, I would just say. But I must give you a lot of confidence to, to be going in at the top of the, the uh, leaderboard. Yeah, it's always a challenge to, to start the last one in the final, but yeah, it's some, something you can always learn from. And it's really good to, okay, to be so there. you're going to be last boat off in the final? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? Yeah, it's perfect. Anyway, if you're 10th, 9th, 2nd, 1st, it doesn't matter. Okay, well, the best of luck for, for the final. We will be watching. It's going to be uh, very exciting. And uh, I guess by making the final, you've also booked a spot for Andorra for Paris. Yeah, I would say so. If From my understanding. If nothing changes, it's, it should be like this, yeah. Okay, well, good luck this afternoon. Thank you so much. In C1 men, eight countries made the final and accordingly each secure a quota spot for Paris. The rest is more complicated. I spoke to Sidris Tassiadis, who finished third in the semi-final behind Benjamin Savsek and Poland's Gregor Hedwig. So Sidris, I mean, you could come into uh, to Lee Valley as a reigning world champion. Yeah. Actually, we've had seven, I think, different world <laughs> champions in C1. Uh, it's a lot of competition. Um, yeah. Was that semi-final run good enough? I think my semi-final run was good enough now for, for the finals. It is very hard and close. The, the position about everybody is pushing a lot. And I think from 1st to 10th, it will be two seconds difference, I think. It will be a hard fight also in, in the final. So, I mean, you took uh, silver back in London 2012. Yeah. That's a lifetime ago now. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you've, you've had a lot of success at this course. It's a lot, a lot. It will be a, a nice atmosphere to, to race again here in Lee Valley. Lee Valley is always... Uh, a special place for me and the memory is also because it, it there or here was my my biggest yeah result and goal and I want to keep it this memories on me to have more motivation about the sport okay well we hope to see you in uh, finals this afternoon good luck thank you we then advanced to final runs at three minute intervals the Lee Valley crowd celebrated Britain's Mallory Franklin taking a home win. I chatted with Mallory at the finish. So you're becoming a bit of a regular on this podcast. You are now a double world champion, six years after Poe. Uh, that must be a nice way to kind of stamp your authority that you're on form. Um, yeah, to some extent. I think it probably benefits a little bit from it being a home course. And um, I feel like quite, quite calm on this course and I quite enjoy it and know the water quite well. And I think that allows me to have that freedom in a final. Um, it was tough to get here. I, I don't think I really obviously had a few struggles in my heats, even though I placed well. I, nearly falling in in this third gate wasn't ideal. But um, no, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And it's really cool to do it in front of the home crowd and to have the support there is awesome. Can you enjoy a final? 
Yeah, I think so. I think this race, with everything else that's on it, with Olympic quotas, part of our Olympic selection, and part of our senior selection, it's there's a lot on it. And I think once I made the final, I kind of got to let go of a lot of that tension. Even though Kim was there as well, it kind of just yeah. I think it's like that final was a big thing. So I think then I was able to just go canoeing and enjoy my run and just try and start reasonably calmly. Not that I fully managed that again, because maybe I should just stop trying to do that because it always goes badly. Um, but a lot of the run was really good, and I'm really proud of it. And kept it contained and kept it clean, which was really important. OK, we all had a lot of uh, hometown support on the banks. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of kids, and you can definitely hear it. So as you pull out the last up, you can hear the amount of noise, um, and it definitely drives you to just push that little bit harder and get through the finish line as quick as possible. OK, but your, your week's not over. No, there's still a lot of racing left, kayak tomorrow, um, which I'm looking forward to. I didn't have the best time in heats, um, struggled a bit with probably the course being a little bit simpler and struggled a bit with that, but I'm looking forward to getting out on this. It's a bit more technical, probably a little bit more to my strengths, but we'll see what happens. I think no matter what, I know that I've like succeeded this race and then kayak cross on Sunday, which should be fun. But okay, but you're going to be one of the early boats off in the uh, semi-final tomorrow. Is that a good thing? Uh, Potentially. I think I'd probably benefit from having done C1 today and experienced the course. It doesn't feel that bad that I'm going off early and maybe it'll be a bit quieter so I can focus on myself a bit better and just try and deliver a solid run. But I think no matter what happens, I'll just try and do my best, try and enjoy my racing and see what comes out of it. OK, well, enjoy being a double world champion. Thank you very much. Thank you. 2017 world champion Benjamin Savsek continued his excellent form. I spoke to him just before prize giving. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, I mean, you'd won the semi-final, but uh, with a touch and then gone a little bit quicker in the final. Yeah, pretty amazing run today in the finals. Uh, I'm really happy because the pressure was on on the start and uh, I was just focusing that I must not do a touch in the finals and uh, do a fast, clean run. and. Uh, uh, I'm really happy to, to, to make it uh, today uh, and uh, be a second time world champion. Yeah, I know. Uh, first, first, actually, the, the first double world champions, I think, since David Florence, which was here back in 2015, but on top of your Olympic title as well. Uh, yeah, it's an important race to, to come out top. Yeah, it was uh, also, that's why it was more important because this was also the Olympic. Uh, we need to catch the Olympic uh, spot, uh, so the pressure was on, and uh, I'm really happy to to make a really good result here on, on this race, which one was really important for also for the next season uh, when there are uh, Olympic uh, games. Okay, well it's also a pleasure for us to see you paddling at your best, which was a tremendous run. Yeah, it was a tremendous run. Uh, I was uh, just going for uh, for the fastest uh, line, and I'm really happy to uh, once okay, again. Okay, we'll enjoy the medal ceremony and uh, yeah. the celebrations afterwards. Many Thank congratulations. you very much. Thank you again. Thanks. Thank you. Picking up on some of the stories today, I was able to chat with Danielle Momenti, Mark Domenjo and Amber Maslin. Danielle, you're no stranger to being on a podium at Lee Valley 11 years ago now since uh, London Olympics. Must be nice to see uh, Paolo uh, on the uh, podium in C1. We were for this, uh, for this race, of course, as uh, the most important of the four years before the Paris 2024. And uh, we work with, uh, I think, the right advice from me that I know the place and uh, I know what to do to be fast here. OK, well, you've also been a world champion yourself. Yes. Uh, well, so, any um, predictions for, uh, for kayak semi-finals and finals well, tomorrow? How tight are we expecting it to be? The, the level is very high and uh, there's many, many names that uh, could fight for uh, uh, for the medals, uh, it's an uh, Olympic uh, quota selection as well, so there's more stress than normal. So I think uh, who is really brave uh, to stay calm in the right moment and push uh, when you need to push uh, will, be, will be the fastest. It's a very hard in our sport to say any names, uh, but probably the, the best will be in the front. Well, well we look forward to, uh, to tomorrow's race and uh, I think we expect Italy to be uh, amongst the, the contenders. Giovanni is uh, fourth in the ranking, so he's one of the guys that there was a uh, show already that uh, he can be one of the medalists of course but uh, we are here uh, to do our best okay well you got a good heritage behind you anyway danielle <laughs> always lovely to see you back here at lee valley thank, thank you thank you very much mark uh, i mean you're no stranger to to lee valley but it's uh, lovely to have you back and uh, what are you doing now so i'm the physical coach of monica doria and i'm basically controlling all her loading and her training and all of that 
and obviously so we work very close with uh, Christian which is the technical coach and yeah yeah very happy to be here actually yeah watching the whole race and yeah, helping them Okay, so with Monica in the final um, and creating a spot for Andorra, one must say that, yeah, you've been doing pretty well in your job. Well, uh, I think that, uh, so because before that job, so I coached Monica for maybe two years, so since I moved to, back to, to Spain. And then uh, what I think is that Christian is, is, is doing a really good job and, you know, Monica has very good values and, and behaviors in terms of, 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 of what's a high level athlete and I'm just there just in case they need that maybe specific input from my studies and all of that but yeah I think that you know they, they know what to do and yeah, okay, well, it's, it's, it's a team effort but yeah I mean it's lovely to see uh, Andorra doing well as a, as a nation uh, and also Monica particularly I mean she's really come to the fore in the last maybe 12 to 18 months yeah yeah I think that what we worked quite hard was getting that consistency because we knew that uh, she was fast but she was maybe getting some maybe too many penalties and all that but now she's working very hard on this and he's way more consistent which which I think that it has been the key point for her to get to to a high level athlete. Okay well congratulations to the whole team and we look forward to seeing Andorra uh, in Paris. Yeah yeah so today we got the spot which was our main goal obviously and yeah, I mean, getting to that final, being the first uh, qualified, uh, that was amazing. You know, we are here and it's only two athletes and four members of staff, which is a very, very small team comparing to any other. And yeah, it's a country that only has uh, 60,000 people living. Uh, we are very proud of the way that we're doing things and hopefully we will see good results in Paris. Yeah, there's a lot happening here at the moment. Um, yeah, I guess it is awesome to be able to paddle the course as a forerunner, um, so we get to enjoy all the moves that we see the athletes doing. It's sort of one of the ideal jobs by actually racing, so that's super nice. Um, today's a lot more technical than the heats runs. There's a lot more moves in it, and we could see there was a lot of time to be gained at the bottom half of the course. So as a commentator, it's uh, exciting, um, especially seeing times coming off in the top couple of splits and seeing how much it costs people to make mistakes at the bottom of the course. OK, is it, is it an easy course? Did you find it an easy course, or are they making it look easy? Uh, they're definitely making it look far easier than I did yesterday. <laughs> um, we got to run it as demos yesterday, so we did course tuning, which we do it in sections. Um, and then as soon as um, it got towards full runs, it's definitely hard to keep the pace on the boat at the bottom. Um, yeah, some of the guys and girls here are making it look very easy towards the bottom of the course. Okay, uh, enjoying uh, commentary as well? Yeah, commentary is great, it's really nice to be able to cheer people on. I do have um, a reflex where if I see paddlers crying at the bottom out of joy, um, I sort of join in. It doesn't really matter how well I know them, but I start kind of crying and I only have a zero or a hundred with that, so sorry for anyone if I'm uh, bawling at you at the bottom of the course. Okay, well, there's going to be a lot more emotions uh, later this afternoon for finals in the canoe and then uh, kayak tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I'm so excited to see the girls uh, this morning, uh, this afternoon racing off in the finals first. It was really tight racing. Just because it's such a technical course, I thought there'd be way more of a gap between first and tenth place. Um, but you can see how tight the racing is, just the class, the whole field is looking great. And tomorrow, of course, kayaks as well. So we'll expect to see a few more options going on on all the different moves. Congratulations to all our medalists. In C1 Women, gold went to Mallory Franklin, silver to Kimberley Woods from Great Britain and bronze to Jess Fox in Australia. In C1 men, gold went to Benjamin Savsek, silver to Nicolas Gestin from France and bronze to Paolo Chisson from Italy. So to day five of the competition with the semi-finals, then finals of the women's and men's kayak. Heat winners were Ricarda Funk from Germany and Jakub Krejci from the Czech Republic. K1 women champion in the 2019 World Cup race was Mallory Franklin again. K1 men champion in Lee Valley for the 2015 Worlds was Yuri Priskovic from the Czech Republic and Joe Clark from Great Britain took the win at the 2019 World Cup race. So talk to you tomorrow when we will know the new 2023 world champions in women's and men's kayak, plus a preview of the kayak cross on Sunday. Thanks to my guests today, Evie Leafarth, Monica Doria Villarubla, Mallory Franklin, Sidris Tassiadis, Benjamin Savsek, Mark Gimendo, Daniel Momenti and Amber Maslin.
Thanks to Aidan Johnson for help with sound editing. See you on the bank. Stay safe. That's it for now. But please subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Audible. And please don't forget to share and leave a review too. In the meantime, keep it fast and clean.